David was having a good time swimming in the lake when he was unexpectedly pulled down into a deep sinkhole under the water. But what happened next in the dark sinkhole was beyond anything he could have imagined. David had no worry on his mind while swimming his laps in a nearby lake. He swam in this lake almost every Sunday without ever having any problems. But little did he know today would be drastically different from the rest. As he was swimming back to shore, he suddenly realized he wasn't getting any closer, no matter how hard he swam. It didn't take him long to realize the water was pulling him backward instead of flowing with him as he swam. He confusedly looked behind him and was met with a rush of panic. Behind him, a sinkhole was forming, and it was getting bigger by the second. David tried to swim as fast as he could, but nothing was working. He tried to scream for help, but one of the reasons why he liked to swim in this lake was that it was always very quiet. As he tried to fight the current, he felt his body aching as he ran out of breath. He sought desperately for something under the water's surface to grab and hold on to, but every little plant he grabbed gave way. His stomach dropped as he felt his legs lowering into the sinkhole. It could be seconds, and he would be swallowed up by the ground itself. Then, he finally grabbed something that was strong enough to hold his weight. He dangled above the sinkhole, looking down into the darkness beneath him, his heart racing as he thought of a way to save himself. As he hung there, he noticed how the sinkhole was slowly filling up. He figured the water would reach him if he could only hold on long enough. Suddenly, he felt his hands slowly slipping away. He tried to tighten his grasp, but that only made matters worse. Before he knew it, his hands fully slipped, and he fell into the sinkhole. He hit the water beneath him with a smack and was a little disoriented while trying to swim up to the surface again. As his hands broke the water's surface, he stuck his head up and gasped for air. His heart was racing, and his mind was trying to comprehend what just happened. He had to get out of the water as soon as possible. As he calmed down, he looked around him. He was definitely inside the sinkhole as he was surrounded by muddy walls. As his gaze followed them to the top, he realized the whole lake had drained into the sinkhole, and the bottom of the lake was now visible. He swam to one of the muddy walls and tried to find something he could grab, but everything was way too slippery. He yelled for help, just hoping someone would hear him and notice the giant hole in the lake. When no response came after minutes of yelling, panic set in. His legs were beginning to cramp, and he knew he was running out of time. To save himself some energy, he turned onto his back, giving his legs some time to rest. As he floated there, looking up at the sky and desperately thinking how in the world he would ever get out of there, he suddenly heard something behind him. Welcome, did you fall too? David shot up and turned around. Behind him, he saw an older looking man but he wasn't in the water. He was sitting at the entrance of a tunnel, kindly looking down at David. Who? How? That tunnel wasn't there a few minutes ago, David exclaimed. His mind couldn't grasp how the tunnel could have appeared out of nowhere. My name is Shagby. Here, take my hand. Shagby reached out his hand, and David hesitantly took it. He pulled him up and was still very confused, as he sat inside the tunnel. Who are you? How is this possible? Oh, this? Shagby said as he looked around him. This is my home. Well, part of it. I felt the ground shake, so I quickly closed up all my tunnels so the water wouldn't flood my home. When the vibration stopped, I knew it was safe to open them up again. So I did. And then I found you, and here we are. Are you being serious? David said, as he confusedly looked at the man. But as he said that, he noticed how dirty the man actually looked. His hands and nails were covered in mud, and it was clear he hadn't bathed in a very long time. He also hadn't gotten a trim in ages, 
as his hair almost reached his elbows. Of course I'm serious, Shagby said. Come, I'll show you around. He put his hair up in a bun and stood up. My real house isn't far from here. David hesitated. Was he really about to follow a strange man into a tunnel system underground where he didn't know his way around? Then he looked down at the water again and figured, what else could he do? You coming? Shaggy yelled. He had already started walking into the tunnel. David quickly walked after him. As they walked through the tunnel system, he tried to remember every turn they made, but it was very hard to do. The tunnels were barely lit, and everything looked the same to him. Then, Shagby suddenly stopped. We're here! Please don't touch anything. Then, he turned a corner, and they stepped into a big chamber underground. The room was filled with furniture made out of dirt and sticks. This is your home? David asked the man, almost too stunned to speak. Yup. I've not been up into the real world for almost five years now, Shagby answered. But how do you eat? Shagby smiled. The ground provides me with everything I need. Leading David further into the chamber, Shagby gestured to a clever contraption made of interwoven roots and leaves, funneling droplets of rainwater into an earthen jug. Nature's own plumbing, he grinned. David was equally amazed by rows of large flat stones, where mushrooms of various shapes and sizes thrived. Their umbrella caps opened wide in the dim light. The Earth's Pantry, Shagby quipped. It was clear that this innovative subsistence amazed David. Beyond the kitchen, an arched passage opened up to Shagby's sleeping quarters. A bed, ingeniously crafted from compacted soil, was covered in layers of dried leaves, providing a soft cushion. Clay and stone shelves displayed personal belongings, a testament to his years underground. Every piece has its memory, Shagby remarked. David traced his fingers over the clay walls, feeling its cold, rough texture, and understanding the delicate balance of solitude and comfort that Shagby had created. Another alcove revealed Shagby's prized collection. Bookshelves carved into the walls showcased worn-out books, their pages yellowed and covers frayed. David pulled out a volume, its title barely legible. Shagby noticed... Books from the outer world, my connection to the past. Some were meticulously wrapped in leaves to protect them from moisture. To David, this library symbolized the man's deep reverence for knowledge, despite the isolation. Shagby guided David to a circular room, its walls polished smooth. Speak, Shagby urged. David hesitated before uttering a word. His voice bounced back magnified and distorted, creating an uncanny effect. The room seemed to have its own pulse, amplifying every sound. It can be unsettling, but also mesmerizing, Shagby commented. David nodded, intrigued by the chamber's auditory tricks, feeling both in awe and slightly disconcerted. As they ventured deeper, David became attuned to the symphony of the underground, the rhythmic dripping of water echoed in the distance, and the soft hum of subterranean insects became noticeable. Every so often, a gentle gust of air would rustle the dried leaves. Nature's own orchestra, Shagby whispered, his voice filled with reverence. To David, these sounds were a soothing reminder of the world's pulse, even in the deepest of caverns. Settling by a fire pit, its flames fed by phosphorescent fungi, Shagby's face took on a nostalgic glow. The flames danced differently down here, he began, much like the tales of my journey. David, captivated, leaned in, the flickering lights casting dramatic shadows on the walls, making the surroundings feel even more surreal. I once treaded where you do now, Shagby began, a distant look in his eyes, Above, I was an archaeologist. Ancient underground cities were my specialty. David listened intently, imagining a younger Shagby, 
excitedly digging through ruins, eager to uncover lost worlds. The thrill of discovery, the allure of the unknown, it was intoxicating, Shagby recalled. But one expedition, Shagby continued, led me astray. Entranced by a series of caverns, I wandered deeper, each twist and turn promising something wondrous. His voice held a hint of regret. But soon, the pathways twisted on themselves, and daylight became a memory. David's heart ached, visualizing Shagby's increasing desperation as the world above faded away. Days turned to weeks. Alone, with dwindling supplies, I faced a decision. Shagby paused, taking a deep breath. Instead of endlessly seeking an exit, I chose to embrace the darkness, to craft a life here. David tried to fathom the depth of that choice, the courage it took to forge a home in such isolation. To live off the grid, detached from society's demands, it's liberating, Shagby mused, his voice strong and clear. Down here, I found peace, a simplicity that the world above often lacks. David pondered this, torn between his desire to return above and understanding the freedom Shagby spoke of. The underground's allure was undeniable, its quiet solace a stark contrast to the bustling world David once knew. Tossing and turning on his earthen bed, David was haunted by the cavern's strange sounds. The ambient hums and drips now felt eerie. Each unexpected noise jolted him awake, and shadows seemed to morph into unfamiliar shapes. Sleep remained elusive as his subconscious mind tangled with the foreign environment, deepening his sense of unease. Observing Shagby, David noticed his frequent, secretive murmurs to himself. Each hushed word and furtive glance deepened David's sense of mistrust. Was Shagby truly his friend, or was there more lurking beneath the surface? The older man's cryptic behavior raised questions and fueled David's growing apprehensions. Conflicted emotions raged within David. On one hand, Shagby had shown him a wondrous underground world. On the other, his behavior was increasingly enigmatic. The inner turmoil was relentless. Was David being ungrateful, or was his instinct for self-preservation sounding an alarm? As they wandered the tunnels, David felt watched. Brief rustlings, barely perceptible movements in the periphery of his vision, kept him on edge. Were they truly the sole inhabitants of this vast underground realm, or were there unseen entities silently observing their every move? The once comforting presence of Shagby now caused anxiety. Each shared glance was heavy with unspoken tension. Words became sparse replaced by long, uneasy silences. The bond, initially formed in mutual wonder, was becoming increasingly fragile as suspicion clouded David's mind. While exploring alone, David stumbled upon a wall covered in faded drawings, twisting patterns and symbols hinted at ancient cartography. Could this be a guide? His heart raced, sensing an opportunity within the cryptic etchings. Eagerly, David began to replicate the symbols onto a piece of weathered parchment he found. Each stroke was filled with hope and anticipation. Maybe, just maybe, these drawings held the secret to finding his way back to the world above. Sitting down with his sketches, David began to decipher the symbols. Overlapping pathways, distinctive landmarks, and recurring patterns began to emerge. Like a puzzle, he pieced together the fragments, hoping to chart a path to freedom. Elation and trepidation surged through David. If his interpretations were correct, he might have a way out. But with this revelation came the weight of decision. The possibilities of escape and its accompanying risks loomed large. Should he share his findings with Shagby or keep them to himself? Trust was now a luxury he wasn't sure he could afford. Shagby's world was here, but David yearned for the sky. The dilemma tormented him, to confide or to act in secret. 
Stealthily, David began amassing essentials, luminous fungi for light, edible mushrooms for sustenance, and rainwater. Each collected item was a step closer to his potential emancipation, a tangible manifestation of his determination. Using available resources, David fashioned rudimentary tools, a sharp-edged stone for cutting, intertwined roots for rope, and compacted clay as markers. He knew these would be invaluable for navigating the maze ahead. Remembering Shagby's ingenious rain collection system, David decided the next downpour would be his cue. The cascading sounds would mask his movements, providing the perfect diversion for his escape. In a secluded alcove, David concealed his gathered supplies. Tucked away from prying eyes, it was his cache of hope. He frequently revisited the spot, each time reinforcing his resolve to break free. As the time approached, David mentally rehearsed his plan. Reflecting on all he'd observed and learned, he fortified his spirit. With each passing moment, he grew more determined, ready to embark on the most crucial journey of his life. Shagby's eyes, previously filled with warmth, now bore into David with a mixture of hurt and accusation. I've seen you, David. Shagby's voice trembled, preparing, hiding, plotting. Do you think so little of me? The weight of their shared experiences hung heavily in the cold, damp air. David's voice cracked with emotion. You want to keep me here, don't you? Just like you, lost and forgotten. Their words ricocheted in the cavernous space, each accusation adding to the thickening atmosphere of distrust. Eyes downcast, Shagby whispered, I've been alone for so long. The silence, it's maddening. I didn't want to keep you trapped, but the thought of that void returning. His voice trailed off, revealing a vulnerability David hadn't seen before. I'm not your enemy, Shagby pleaded tears streaking his dirt-covered face. Stay, David. Let's find a way together. His voice was laden with hope and despair, revealing the depth of his isolation. While David felt a pang of sympathy, his desire for freedom remained undiminished. I cannot stay, Shagby. I need to find my way back. Their final exchange was charged with the intensity of clashing desires and dreams. Armed with his sketches and tools, David ventured deeper into the winding tunnels. Each turn was a gamble, as he relied on his memory and the ancient symbols to guide his way. The further he went, the more the cave seemed to come alive. Faint whispers echoed, and shadows danced just beyond his field of vision. Each step required immense bravery, knowing that the unknown lurked all around. Sudden rustlings and darting figures signaled the presence of underground dwellers. David narrowly avoided several confrontations, his heart racing with every close call as he dodged and hid from the unseen threats. As he journeyed on, the concept of time dissolved. Days? Weeks? The sameness of the tunnels, with only the dim glow of fungi to light his path, made it impossible to tell. Even as despair threatened to take hold, David's spirit remained unbroken. The thought of sunlight, open skies, and freedom propelled him onward, even in his darkest moments. Just when all seemed lost, a dim light flickered in the distance. Growing brighter with each step, it promised the world outside and fueled David's resolve. With one final push, David emerged from the underground gasping as fresh air filled his lungs. The sensation of the gentle breeze and the sight of an open sky were overwhelmingly beautiful. The underground was replaced by a vast forest. Trees towered above, and unfamiliar sounds surrounded him. He pressed on, driven by the hope of civilization. Stumbling upon a town, David was met with astonishment. To them, he was a ghost from the past a man long presumed lost. 
Their reactions, a mixture of shock and joy, solidified the magnitude of his incredible journey. David's shock was palpable when the townsfolk revealed he'd only been gone for two weeks. In his mind, the endless tunnels and dark corners had stretched on for months, challenging his very perception of time. Over a warm meal, an elderly woman recounted tales of Shagby's renown. Once a brilliant archaeologist, he was famous for his discovery of ancient underground civilizations making his mark on the world above. Yet, 20 years ago, he vanished without a trace during an expedition. No one knew of his fate. The brilliant mind lost to the very tunnels he loved, until David's return shed light on the mystery. David pondered the profound impact of isolation on one's perception of time. How, in the quietude of the caves, days had felt like months, while the world above had remained almost untouched. As David listened, his heart swelled with sympathy. The weight of Shagby's solitude became evident. Two decades of silence, with only memories as companions, evoked deep empathy. Fueled by a mix of guilt and duty, David felt compelled to return to the sinkhole. With Shagby's story fresh in his mind, he began to organize a rescue mission. Joined by a team of experienced rescuers, David guided them down. The familiar yet foreboding tunnels greeted them, a journey of redemption awaiting. Reaching Shagby's chambers, they found them hauntingly vacant. The bed, the makeshift furniture, all intact but devoid of life, echoing a forlorn emptiness. Hours turned to days as they delved deeper. Each corridor seemed to hold a whisper of Shagby, but he remained a shadow, always just out of reach. In a concealed alcove, they found a note addressed to David. Shagby's words were heartfelt, expressing his gratitude for the brief companionship and urging David to live freely. He wrote of his choice to remain with the underground, his true home. David, forever changed, decided to pen their shared journey. From the pages emerged a tale of trust, despair, hope, and understanding. Shagby's legend was immortalized, a testament to human spirit, resilience, and the bonds formed in the most unexpected places.